Hey guys, it's Thursday. And um, one of my kids this morning, I commented, oh, I, you know, going live on Facebook today at four. And he's like, it's Thursday already? Yep, it's Thursday already. So on one hand, we're like, oh my goodness, it's Thursday already, I can't believe it. And Thursday just means one thing, that Shabbat is coming. Or Thursday could mean, wow, Shabbat is coming. Especially at times like this, where our days are just rolling into each other, one after the other, after the other. It's such a gift to mark time, to have the gift of time. To an old, mute everyone. Okay, so it's a real gift of time. And you know, the Jews, the first mitzvah they get in the Torah is hachodesh hazeh lachem. This month is for you. Meaning this, you have to mark time. That's how, you know, God was taking the Jews we're in the time period now between Passover and Shavuot. God was taking the Jews from slavery to freedom. But what does freedom actually mean? And that's what God is saying. Freedom is using your time and having control over your time. When we were slaves, the, our masters were the, were, the, were the holders of our time and told us what to do. But as free people, we can, we're the masters of our own time. And um, we're in a month now, which I've mentioned at other times, that each day it's the month now of ER. It's between Passover and Shavuot. And we count seven weeks until Shavuot. But something interesting about this month is that every night we count, or every day we count. And each day, this is the only month that every day has a mitzvah. And um, in teaching the parasha class this week, we learned a very important message. The reason that we count every day is not to count each day but to make each day count and that's what i think of when we come now it's thursday which means tomorrow is shabbat and our days don't just roll into each other one after the other it's an opportunity for our days to be um counted and it's an opportunity for us to mark time and to stop and to focus and be able to use our time properly because the, the weeks can just run away and suddenly you say, where did my time go? But if you're cognizant of time, you can make time count. Okay, and I'm cognizant of your time, so let's get making pretzel challah. Okay, so you know what I'm loving about this time? Um, I'm teaching you new stuff, but I'm learning right along with you. I've discovered so many new things that I've, I'm learning to make, things that I you know, haven't been making for years and years. So bagels has become a favorite in our family. The babka, I have to admit, we've been making for a very long time. Challah is an old, um, you know, an old favorite. And pretzel challah is new. It's a new favorite around here, and I bet it'll be a new favorite for you guys as well. So, um, you really could use any challah recipe for your pretzel challah. Pretzel challah, big ballpark pretzel, soft pretzel, meets, meets traditional challah. That's the flavor we're heading for, and it is amazing. The only thing you, um, you really could use any challah dough for this recipe, it's the method more that I'm gonna show you. I did send you all the recipe um, that I'm gonna to follow today, but in all honesty, if you prefer a different flavor challah, um, you can go with that as well, and you'll follow the same steps to end up getting pretzel challah. So for today, got my bowl, and we're gonna start with the recipe. It's two teaspoons, no, two tablespoons of yeast. I did measure it out but you can go ahead and get two tablespoons of yeast and pour that right into your bowl. So even though I always tell you in all my challah recipes, you can just dump everything in the bowl and mix it all up because I have so much faith in the Red Star yeast, today I'm just gonna follow the pretzel challah recipe that I sent all of you. So we have over here two tablespoons of yeast. We're going to add in a quarter cup of sugar. Put into your yeast a quarter cup of sugar and into that, just half a cup of water. So I measured out over here, it's a little more than that, so I'm just gonna put in half a cup of water, warm water. So this is, just so you remember, in order to proof your yeast. Always put in water that is temperature of the, of the sink in the kitchen. So run your sink in your kitchen, um, stick your, the, the, um, your wrist underneath the water, and when it feels like warm bath water, that's the kind of temperature you're going for, you're going to pour it right into your bowl. So the idea is to get this to start to proof a little bit. Let me mix it up. Give it a quick little mix. So in here we have two tablespoons of yeast, quarter cup of sugar, and a half a cup of water. And this yeast is already doing 
you know, it's already bubbling a drop. I'm not sure if you can see. It's starting to bubble a little bit and it's starting to have some action right over there. So that's the, you know, what we're looking for in our yeast. And as soon as we have just a little reaction, a couple bubbles, we're gonna go right on to our next step. So our next step is, it says six cups of flour, a quarter cup of oil, one and a half teaspoons um, of salt, and another two cups of flour, of water. Here's something else I found out in this recipe. So I always tell you, add the flour slowly. It stands true for any bread you're making. Your altitude, your temperature, the weather, and always sometimes you need half a cup more, half a cup less. You ended up, you didn't realize you used a smaller egg in a certain recipe, so you have a drop less liquid. You pour a little extra water in, you have a little more liquid. Always add the flour slowly. In making this dough, I find that it's pretty exact. It actually needs, in, in my kitchen, it needs always a drop more flour to get the right consistency. But let's go. So I'm gonna add in to start um, my six cups of flour. Flatten your flour, make them straight, one, Okay, this dough, okay, so now I'm gonna tell you that this recipe is from Jamie Geller on Joy of Kosher, and on her site, she says to make two challahs from this recipe, but I think that is way too big, because your challahs, you're gonna see, they have a boiling process, and unless you're working in a massive bowl, I think it's too big. So I find that for this recipe, it's four challahs, or, you know, a bunch of challah rolls, but at least four challahs. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and one more is six. Okay, so I've got six cups of flour in here. You can add in six cups, go for it. You can add the full six, I'm almost positive. If you wanna add five and a half, you could do that. I have a quarter cup of oil that's measured out right over here, a quarter cup of oil going into my recipe. Um, one and a half teaspoons of salt, okay, and um, okay, and now we're going to put in another two cups of water. Just to be safe, I'm going to measure it out into my other pouring thing. Remember, rerun the water in your sink. Make sure it's warm. I'm going to actually feel this water. Yeah, it's still warm. So one and two, okay. Not sure you had a little pitter patter of feet around here. Real life is happening on a Thursday afternoon. So yep, Zoom classes for the day are finishing up. Snacks are happening. The big boys are still in class. So not yet dinner time. So it's just lots of action in our home. Okay, so I'm starting to mix up this dough. And, okay. Um, Okay, you hear lots of noise right here. Okay, I'm starting to mix up my dough and it's starting to come together nicely. You wanna knead that in your bowl, going from the outside in, scrape the sides of your bowl and bring it in. Okay, I think maybe I only put in five cups when I originally started. I wasn't, I must have lost track of the counting because this looks like only five cups of flour. It definitely is gonna need more flour, this dough. Okay, which is fine. Oh, less is more in this case because you can always add more flour. I'm going to add about another half a cup and I'm gonna keep kneading it into a dough. Okay. Oh, this house smells delicious today. Lots of stuff baking. We have our Taste of Shabbat packages going out tomorrow, special Mother's Day treats that Mushki's been hard at work at. Necha's new baked goods business is up and running, so she's been hard at work making all that. Last week she was the maker of the, of the chocolate chip cookies that went in the Shabbat packages. Today Mushki took care of the treat for the moms. And this week's package, amazing to have my kids home, my girls with me, and in and together enjoying, preparing for Shabbat, preparing and sending our love to all of you. Okay, I'm rolling this. Um, okay. All right, let me see, it's still coming together a little more. I need a little more flour. Keep adding your flour slowly and kneading it together. Okay, keep going. All right. I hope it's coming together nicely for you as well, your dough. Okay, now the truth is this dough is going to need an hour and a half to rise. So no, now go, go serve dinner and come back. No, I actually have risen dough for us to work with, so don't worry about that. 
And now my dough is coming together nicely. And like with all flour, with all challah, the more effort you put in, the better your dough, the more you need it. And like with my, I always say with raising our kids, the more energy we put in, hopefully better the result. At least we'll know we tried our best, right guys? Okay, so this is pretty good now. This dough is a beautiful, beautiful dough. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. I prepared a bit of oil right over here, a little bit of vegetable oil, you can get some. And I'm gonna pour it into the bowl. And I've poured the oil now into the bowl. I'm taking my ball of dough and I'm rolling it um, into the, I'm rolling the dough in the ball of, uh, in the oil. So now my oil, my dough is nice and oiled. That will help that it doesn't stick um, to the cover when it rises. I'm gonna take off my gloves and I'm gonna grab some saran wrap, plastic wrap right over here. Um, Small down. Okay. You gotta love um, the big pans of, the big boxes of, of um, saran wrap. They come a plastic wrap. Let me tell you, it's the best thing I ever learned to use. They beat the, even the Costco size stretch tight. This beats it by amazing. So pull it out and I'm going to cover my dough. Okay. So guys, this dough has to rise. I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna recap what we just did, and then we'll go on to the next step. Into our bowl we put two teaspoons of yeast, a quarter cup of sugar, and half a cup of warm water. And then it start, we gave it a couple of seconds to start proofing. After that we added in five cups of flour, a quarter cup of oil, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and two cups of water. And we began to knead. We saw we needed more flour and we slowly added. We added and added until we had a good dough, kneading from the outside in, adding slowly the, yeast, the, the dough until we got a nice dough consistency. I then oiled my bowl with a drop of vegetable oil, put my dough inside and covered it to rise. This goes on the side now for about an hour and a half to rise. Meanwhile, it will double in size. You want your yeast, your dough to double in size. Okay, that's what will happen and then you know you're ready for your next step. So my next step is, I would be separating, at this point I would be separating a piece of dough and then I would be braiding my dough. But here's something very important to remember. that when it comes to the mitzvah of separating dough, you need to have at, at least at some about five pounds of flour. This dough is not big enough for that. We cannot make a blessing on this dough. Like I've told you before, the word challah does not refer to the loaf that we eat. The word challah in temple times referred to the tithing, the name of the gift that was given to the Kohen from the dough. Your, one of your tithings, one of the things you had to do was to remove a piece of your dough and give that as a gift to the Kohen. So um, sometimes if you make a middle-sized piece of dough, you, like about eight cups of flour, you can remove a piece without the blessing and um, if it's just a four piece cup of flour, if it's a four, four cup dough, you wouldn't do anything. If it's about an eight cup dough, you can remove a piece of challah, which be, would be the gift to give, but you wouldn't be able to make a blessing. And if you have about a five pound dough, which is about a 12 cup um, dough, then you'd be able to make the blessing. So for today, I'm just gonna punch it down, punch down my dough. And, and like I always tell you, it's always good to have a little bit of a drop stick. You can add a bit of flour as you go. Punch down my dough. And I can remove a piece of dough, but I cannot, it was enough dough to remove a piece of dough, but it's not enough dough to make a blessing. Now what happens when you remove a piece of dough? What are we doing in tithing from our dough? What we're doing is we make a blessing. A blessing is, it's a pipeline. And it's a, a way that when we recognize God and recognize something higher, we're saying, God, bring this blessing into my home, into my life, into the bless the food that I'm making, and it should have the results of warmth and happiness and homeliness, homeliness in it. So what, what am I doing when I separate a piece of dough? I'm thinking about someone else. I'm saying, God, just as I want you to give me gifts, I'm going to give this to the Kohen. We've spoken about this, that in these days there is no um, Kohen who is, there's no temple uh, with a Kohen working in the temple. And so even though this is a, um, a piece of dough that has been um, um, consecrated for something holy. 
um, I, I, so I burn it as, you know, as a symbolic, symbolically. I'm going to put this aside to take care of it. Like I mentioned to you, your dough is going to be able to make four hollows, okay? You're going to divide your dough first in half and then in half again, okay? And I need a knife over here and I'm getting one, okay? In half and then in half again. Okay, your extra dough you're going to put on the side. Don't worry about your extra dough right now. But right now we're going to take our dough and braid it. Now the truth is you can really braid it into any shape that you're comfortable braiding it in. It's, you know, some people are just good at a three braid like they're doing their kids hair. Some people want to do a four braid, a six braid. For today's purposes, I'm actually just going to do a three braid because I want to show you the method most important. Okay, I'm going to make a three braid challah. So I'm just got my three, got three balls of dough right here and I'm rolling it out. This part you're probably gonna have to do with yourselves after your dough rises a little bit later, but it's, if you just follow, watch me now, you'll know exactly what to do. So I'm rolling out the dough, one, two, and three. Okay, you can, remember I told you you can make any braid that you're comfortable braiding. The purpose of this challah this week is more the flavor than anything else. Okay, here comes an interesting piece. After the first rising, you don't need another second major rising. You need to rise, just for about 20 minutes. Okay, but the good news is, is that, or well, close doubles in size, is that I already braided one 20 minutes ago. So this is ready to go. Okay, what happens now is, I'm gonna need someone to bring the camera over. Okay, so Mushki's gonna help me here just to make sure we have a good view. I'm gonna take this, keep this straight. I'm gonna take this um, challah, and it's gonna go into our pot. So the pot behind me has, Okay, this is the thing about the sauce pot. If you have a low saucepan with a lid, that's your best pot to use. I don't necessarily have the right like low saucepan, so I'm using like a deep frying pan that I had, um, or you could use a wok. And um, I just don't want to use like a deep stock pot because you're gonna have to you're, you're gonna have to maneuver your challah in the pot and turn it over, it basically has the same step as the bagels that we made. So it goes into the pot and then it flips around. I forgot to tell you something really important. Just like with the bagels, I put my challah down to rise on a piece of parchment paper. Put the challah down to rise on a piece of parchment paper so you don't have to transfer it into the water. I'm having a little bit of connection trouble here, so just make sure that it's working, okay. Anyhow, hopefully you guys are still seeing me. Um, one second, let me just fix the, the connection. Give me one minute, guys. One second. Okay, hopefully this works. You didn't switch it. It didn't switch. Okay, we'll see. Anyhow, here is our challah, and it's risen on our piece of parchment paper. Behind me, I have eight cups of water and three quarters of a cup of baking soda. What this is going to do is it's going to stop the rising process, essentially, of our challah. And it's kind of stops everything inside so that when I bake it, the rising action, I need you to do what you just did again. The rising action basically only happens inside, which creates that dough, the softness inside, and the crust on the outside. Okay, um, give me a, okay. So I'm taking this dough, this challah, and on my parchment paper, I am dropping it into the water. Okay, I have prepared two, I have prepared two um, spatulas, and you're gonna need them. So I'm taking my, my challah, and I'm gently kind of pressing it into the water. Now, what's gonna happen is, even if you have a big pot, your challah kind of starts to rise to the top. So while it's in here, I'm gonna just keep pouring water over it to make sure everything's getting water the whole time. We're gonna give it about 15 seconds on each side, and I'm not sure what that looks like, I'll count to 15, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. At this point, you gently take out your baking paper and discard that. And now we have to flip the challah dough. And that's how we have to have two spatulas, because if you have two spatulas, you can balance it and flip it right over. And now on the other side, again, it needs about 15 seconds, and I'm continuing to bathe the water as we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Oh, I'm just counting, who knows? Oh, good, I passed for kindergarten, I can count. Anyhow, um, if you wanted your challah to have a little bit of like a sweetness, you actually could add some brown sugar to this um, water bath. I didn't, I decided to go more traditional, but you'll see in one of the recipes that I shared, I did write brown sugar, and then I realized that I wouldn't have wanted it to be so sweet, so I left it as it. Right now, again, I take my two spatulas. You must have a prepared baking sheet, and you, for your challah to go onto a greased prepared baking sheet. I realized that, okay, so make sure you oil your baking pan in advance so your challah is coming right out onto that. Okay, so I'm putting my two spatulas underneath. Wish me luck. This is actually the hard part, guys. This is the only hard part, and I'm flipping it over. Beautiful. Okay, this is my challah, and it is looking very, very beautiful. Okay, so far, this is how it looks. Now I'm gonna take um, my brush that I just used to oil, and I'm gonna brush the challah with water from the pot. So look, it gets a, not an, egg not an egg wash, but a water wash. Okay, it's getting a nice water wash all over. Okay, let me shut that. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with some kosher salt. Some people might like some sesame seeds, but I'm gonna keep it pretty traditional. I have seen, um, Pretzel, ha pretzel challah, like, you know, commercially with za'atar in it. So I imagine anything, um, you could do different flavors, but for today we're gonna go with a traditional salt. I'm sure you could order, you know, pretzel salt if you want specifically that, but kosher salt should be good. And you wanna give it a good helping of pretzel salt. Can we get some um, little people who wanna taste some pretzel challah? Great, okay. And we can pull this camera back a little bit, that'd be great. I'm giving a good helping of salt because I heard that the salt really gives it a yummy flavor. Okay, now it doesn't rise anymore. It doesn't rise again. It's ready to go in the oven. Your oven should be preheated to 350, and your challah goes in for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now here's something interesting and important to, that you can note. When you braid your challah, we said it needs about 20 minutes to rise. Braid your challah, put your pot of water to start cooking, and when your water's boiling, that's about 20 minutes and you're ready for the next step. So you don't have to like have everything prepared, but make sure in advance to have um, your, oh, I don't know what I was just saying. I lost my train of thought. Anyhow, guys, this is going in the oven now for about 25 to 30 minutes. And voila, we have got pretzel challah. Okay. Now, you see the peanut gallery is here guys. Anyhow, here is pretzel challah. I'm gonna show it to you and I'm gonna tell you why I've got mustard on my pretzel challah tray. Okay, let's clean up our set of drop guys. Okay, so here is our pretzel challah. It's a little bit, it came out of the oven not so long ago. It does need to get pretty brown your pretzel challah. And it needs, and as it cools off, it's gonna harden. Okay, but here's something really important to know about pretzel challah. You can't freeze it and then use it another week. The reason you can't freeze it is from the water bath, when you defrost it, it gets watery. So actually it doesn't work to defrost, to um, freeze your, what I say? To freeze your challah. What you could do, either make it today, you put it on this, you know, put it after it cools off completely, stick it into an airtight plastic bag, Enjoy it tomorrow. Before Shabbat tomorrow, you can also pop it back in the oven to, um, to enjoy, to, to get a little bit warm before you serve it. Okay, um, but anytime I've made pretzel challah, it's been a big hit, and so you don't usually have any left over, so you don't have to worry about, oh yeah, I have so much pretzel challah, what am I gonna do with it? Okay, Eli is here. Are you gonna taste my pretzel challah? He's gonna wash hamotzi because it's bread. He's gonna wash three on the right, three on the left. I'm gonna slice the pretzel challah for him today, okay? And he's gonna come in, he's gonna, so the outside, inside is nice and soft, the outside is crunchy. And Eli, do, um, before you take a mochi, make, take a bite of it, make a bracha, come inside the camera, everyone wants to see you. Here's Eli. Okay, he's gonna make a bracha on this challah. Okay. It's good? You can tell everyone if it's good. Okay, which, oh, you want honey mustard? Okay, he wants some honey mustard. Okay, I don't have that, okay. 
So I'm gonna give Andy with some honey mustard, even though a lot of people would prefer maybe a more traditional mustard, but just a regular yellow mustard. But here's Eddie's getting some pretzel challah with honey mustard. Eddie, stay in here and tell us how it tastes. <laughs> okay, give a thumbs up. Shall I make you again? Okay. Anyone else here want to taste? Okay, Aaron wants to taste. I don't like mustard. You don't like mustard. Okay, I can just give you Aaron. Go wash our mochi and then come back. Yeah, all the tasters are coming in to get a little flip. You don't like to taste. Lots of friends are coming in to taste. Okay. I'm going to, lots of kids are coming in to taste. Okay. I'm slicing up the honey, the challah here. And we're all going to enjoy. Any kids come over, make a bracha. Okay, come on in. Aaron's here. Make a bracha. I gotta give you an opinion after. Take a bite. Take a bite, and when you swallow, tell me what you tell everyone what you think of it. Is it good? Is it interesting? It's different flavor. Awesome. Here's an Eli Isra. Maishi, come on in, Maishi. Amen. Stay here and tell everyone what you think. <laughs> okay. And yes, Beryl, Beryl wants a little taste. What, Beryl, what? It's good, okay. All right, this is lots of different palettes over here. Enjoying pretzel challah, okay, awesome. Okay, here's the main taste tester. Baruch atah dinoi. Eloheinu melech ha'ilom. Hamaytzi lechem. Amin ha'arez. Amin. Okay, here we go. All right, at least we have someone who's practicing that as we just wait until he swallows a boy talks. Wow, that's delicious. I just want to say on, on behalf of the Omener Peanut Gallery, we really appreciate these bakes because it brings a lot of delicious food. Yeah. Not good for the stomach and the calories, but so we appreciate good. it. Okay, oh so God. one last thing, friends. Guys, um, this coming oh, yeah, Sunday, oh, Sunday is Mother's Day. <laughs> many of you are not with your mothers. Many of you wish you were with your mother. Many are missing their mother. Many wish they were a mother. But everyone has a mother, had a mother. And it's a great way to celebrate, celebrate women all over the world. And this coming Sunday, my mom, who is my role model and inspiration, together with my eight sisters and sisters-in-law and myself, which makes 10 of us, are, are gonna zoom around the world. And you're all invited to join us as we make Shabbat in an hour. Each of us doing a different recipe. You can watch, you can join, invite your friends, invite your mothers, and it's going to be on Zoom. That's the best way to see it. You need to get the Zoom information in order to log in. If you, when you register, you'll be entered to win some fabulous raffle prizes as well. So it's a fun Mother's Day activity for you and all the women you love um, to kind of virtually spend some time together on Mother's Day. You, in order to find that link, it's at tinyurl.com backslash Ladies. Or you can email me and I will send you the link. That's on my website, on the website as well. Shabbat Shalom, friends. Amazing making pretzel challah with all of you. And I'll see you in my kitchen on Sunday. All the best. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>